Welcome to Kid Missing TV. I'm your host, Angelina Wilson, and these are your updates for 50s February 2024. First of all, I am very excited that we have an update in the Mary Anderson Doe case. If you are unfamiliar, let me familiarize you, and I will put a, a link. Um, <coughs> she was a lady in her middle age who was found to have died of cyanide poisoning in the Vintage Park Hotel in Seattle, Washington in 1996. Um, she checked in under the assumed name Mary A. Anderson, and she she gave an address in New York, which appeared that she knew New York to some degree because the street was in one borough and the zip code was in another borough and phone number was for another place. None of it added up. Um, she left the note. Um, dead by own hand. Use my body how you will. Um, and they have been working on her DNA since it got funded at the same time that the Christmas Tree Lady's DNA was funded. Um, as you know, she was identified as Marilyn Myers. Um, and even though she died in Virginia, she was actually from Davenport, Iowa. Almost three quarters of the way across the country. So, Mary could be from anywhere. Um, DNA Solves, or Othram Labs, have done some DNA. They don't have close enough relative matches yet to identify Mary, but they're working on it. And as of November 10th, 2023, the latest update is that according to her DNA, she is at least partially of a Middle Eastern background. Middle Eastern, meaning Arabic. Um, she did have dark skin. A lot of people thought she might be Mediterranean, um, which is not too far off, actually. Um, Mediterranean would be um, Greek, French, Italian, um, and I know you're saying French. Yes, part of French is part of France is on the Mediterranean, and French people can be super dark. Um, to the point that I have <laughs> French people um, in my family that I have pictures of that if you didn't know they were French, you'd swear they were African American. Although I do have those two um, <laughs> in my tree. Nothing wrong with that. I, I haven't figured out where to put him yet, though. I'm still working on that. I still want to know what family married an African American and had a child. Um, anyway, back to Mary. She is Middle Eastern according to her DNA. Or at least it's suggestive of that. Um, so that's could be a huge clue. They said she didn't have an accent. So it could mean she's Middle Eastern, but she grew up here. You know what I mean? Um, her case number at NamUs is UP12916. Um, they're saying anyone's DNA profile could be the missing link to help identify this woman. And this is a case I want to see solved so badly. Um, and I thought it was right around the corner when um, the Christmas tree lady was identified. And she, I really feel like she will be the more DNA is uploaded. And they'll get a niece, a nephew, a cousin, something even if she didn't have any children. A brother or a sister, possibly. Now, I'm thinking about myself. I do have 
I have sibling. We've talked about that in other videos um, on the other channel. I don't know her. I want to, but I don't. Um, again, go to the other channel. Um, and I have a niece. But as far as I know, their DNA has not been done. And um, I don't have any other siblings or no whole siblings. I do have a million cousins, which most people at least have cousins. You know, when they say they don't have family, I could say that too. Because both of my parents are deceased. And I don't have full siblings. That being said, I have a million cousins on both sides. I have aunts and uncles. Um, her aunts and uncles probably are not alive. If they are, they're extremely old. Um, so, there's somebody that's going to match your DNA. Even if they're not your immediate family. Somebody's going to match your DNA. You know? Um, so, you never know. You know, Robert Stack used to say, you might hold the key to solve a mystery. You might. Your DNA might hold the key. He could have never imagined that, but your DNA could hold the key to solving a mystery. A lot of the lost love stories that they did on there can be solved with DNA now. Um, now, they have used dental records, fingerprints, and media appeals, which have all been futile in unlocking her identity. So, more DNA data that gets into their hands, and I know it's scary for some people, but you know what? They're not trying to convict you of a crime, they're just trying to give a lady her name back. Um, but if you have any information about this case and this lady, or think you might, were you at the Vintage Park when she was there? Were you in Seattle and see her around? Did you see the vehicle she got out of? Did you talk to her in passing? Think about those things. Contact law enforcement or solve at authram.com. That's S-O-L-V-E at symbol O-T-H-R-E-M dot com. They're pretty determined to give this lady her name back. Now, we have an identified doe. I thought I did her case. I can't find it anywhere on the site. So, I'm going to do it as an update. Sahara Sioux has been identified. In August of 1979, her remains were discovered in an open field at the intersection of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sahara Avenue in Las Vegas, Nevada, and that's where she got the nickname Sahara Sioux. Um, in September of 2022, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department submitted forensic evidence to Othram in the Woodlands, Texas. Authram scientists successfully got a DNA profile and did forensic, DNA, uh, forensic genealogy, genetic genealogy, um, and developed leads, meaning they found close relatives, gave that to police, and police confirmed it. Cold case investigators continued their investigation using, again, using the new leads, and they learned that she was 19-year-old Gwen Marie Story. Um, Gwen was born February 23, 1960. She had left Cincinnati, Ohio to find her biological father in California. So 
somehow ended up dead in Las Vegas. Um, she left with men, um, two men, that need to come forward and talk to police. Um, and the two men said that they left her in the Las Vegas area. You know, Gabby Losis makes a good point. She said, why would they tell where they left her if they left her there unalive? And it's a, it's a good point. It's valid. Um, but that's why she wasn't identified. Cincinnati is, to coin one from Jeremy, a hell's of a long way from Las Vegas. Just say it. Um, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Homicide Cold Case Section is investigating the case because they still don't know who killed her. Um, anyone with information about Gwen or the two males that she traveled with is urged to contact Homicide at 702-828-3521. 702-828-3521. Or by email at homicide at lvmpd.com. Or to remain anonymous, you can contact Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555. 702-385-5555. Or over the internet at crimestoppersofnv.com. <clears throat> Because now that she has her name, we need to put a name to her killer or killers. Um, Sahara Sue was strangled. Um, well, Gwen was strangled. She was 19 years old. She would be 64 years old. A mom, a grandma, hopefully living a good life with the love of her life, if this hadn't happened to her. She wasn't even out of her teens. Let's bring justice. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you next time here on Kid Missing TV. Please subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 by Memorial Day and 200 over on the other channel by St. Patty's Day. Bye, guys. God bless you. Mwah.